Hello, I'm Teresa Middleton and I'm a Field Service Program Manager with the Iowa Soybean Association Research Center for Farming Innovation. And with me here today is Pat Merkin, who farms in Story County. Pat's been farming here for many years and he continues to be a leader in conservation. And today we're gonna to follow up with Pat on his cover crops for this season and we'll look at a little bit of data from around the state as well. This year was a very unusual growing season. We started out very, very carefully watching the moisture content in the fields as we began our planting, and I'm so glad that we watched it carefully. We changed our tillage practices this spring, and we went from uh, two passes, one with a disc, one with a field cultivator prior to planting, to one with a disc, and then no-till cultures on the planter. This was to preserve soil moisture in the top six inches because we were very low on soil moisture at the time of planting. Growth of the plants was slow during the growing season due to the dryness. And then there was kind of a burst at the end there was, was some rain. And miraculously, I don't know how this happened for sure. I'd like to give Teresa some credit. We ended up with uh, uh, 65.44 bushel soybean average on all of our farms, which we had never achieved before. If you would have told me that in mid-April that we were going to end up with that average on our soybean crop, I wouldn't have believed you. Low moisture was a definite concern coming into March. We did soil moisture probes and dug up the fields and found that we had very little reserve moisture so we terminated the cover crop in the third week of March. We dissed it up thoroughly and essentially preserved that moisture for planting. The actual herbicide termination of the cover crop occurred the third week in April with a disc and it seems to work out very well with our operation because our soil in Story County is a lot heavier than a lot of other soils so it works out well for us. We've managed to achieve success on a regular basis with just a basic cereal rye and oat mixture. Our fall came early and we were able to seed down our cover crops for 2022 crop year earlier. Our average seeding date is the 15th of October, so I am very positive that we'll have positive cover crop growth and adequate moisture coming into the spring especially with these late rains that we've just been having this past week. ISA conducts cover crop research like PATS across the state in order to capture data on different soil types, different weather situations, and to build a larger data set for statistical confidence. Since 2018, we've conducted 16 of these time of termination trials across the state, six going into cornfields and 10 going into soy. For most of these trials, we do tend to see a slight decrease in yield for the later cover crop termination where more biomass was allowed to grow. Usually it's around 5 bushels or less, but in some instances we do see differences up into the 9, 10, 11 bushel range. This year in particular was a little bit of a difficult year for cover crops, especially in my area in the northeast of Iowa where we had a late frost at the end of May, which was hard on fields where there was some cover crop residue, so do keep that in mind. But first we're going to look at this graph of soybean yield by termination date. So we've got yield on the y-axis and the cover crop termination date along the x-axis. Each color is a different trial, so we'll take this orange trial down in the bottom left corner as an example. So the singular dot is the planting date, and the other two dots represent the early and late cover crop termination date respectively. So we can see that this one was planted uh, right at the end of April. The first termination uh, treatment was around the middle of April, just a little bit after, and the second termination treatment was just before mid-May. And we can see there's a maybe four to five bushel difference here between those two treatments. And then when we look at the entire graph, we can see that's kind of a trend that persists across most of these trials. There tends to be a few bushel less yield for the later cover crop treatments. So here we see a similar graph for corn yield for those six trials, and it's a pretty similar story. There tends to be a little bit of a yield hit on the later termination dates. I will say though, where we tend to see success, it's usually when the termination date is just a little bit after that planting date. So we see actually a yield bump around these ones where the termination date is either at planting or just a little bit after. We actually see a yield increase in the later termination dates there. 
Finally, to give you some sense of how much cover crop biomass we ended up getting in these trials, here we have the dry cover crop biomass on the x-axis compared to the yield for the trials for which it was available. So it's a little bit all over the place with how much the yield was impacted based on the cover crop dry biomass. I think these variations in numbers indicate that it would be possible for us to manage our way out of this with a little bit more knowledge and with cooperative weather. So finally, we'll look at the results from the penetrometer that we demonstrated in the previous video in this series, and that's a tool that measures soil resistance as PSI down through the soil profile. So here we've got two fields from 2020 and three fields from 2021, and the early termination is represented by the red line and the late termination strips by the blue line. And you can see pretty clearly in almost all these trials, there is more soil resistance in the earlier terminated strips, indicating that there is a little bit better soil structure in those late termination strips with more cover crop biomass. So while yield is still our number one priority, it's just nice to see some other metrics of what's going on in the soil as well. So if you're interested in trying out cover crops on your own farm, don't forget to first start small and make sure that you do it for at least a couple of years so you get a couple of different weather situations. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that the planting depth for your cash crop is where it needs to be. If you're going into corn, make sure you front load your nitrogen so that we're not running into any issues there. Finally, if you'd like to work with us and do some comparisons on your own farm, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can find our contact information at iasoybeans.com under the research tab. Thanks for watching.